Hi everyone, welcome back to Box Delights. Welcome to our Merv playthrough. We're on round two in the first year, and it's the corrupt magistrate to go first. Remember, I told you last time what I'm hoping to do is place my master meeple here, place a building, and then grab two resources. And because I'm at the back of the queue, that's not going to happen because <laughs> they're going to block that spot. If not with the corrupt magistrate's master meeple, then with the high courtiers. For now, let's pull their AI card and see what they do. It could be the palace, but it's not, it's the market. Okay. The marketplace in this area here represents the trade routes on the Silk Road, eastwards towards Pakistan and Tajikistan, and westwards towards Iran and Iraq. So the map is kind of a little bit rotated. This is the north of the city, but this is the east of the map. It doesn't matter. It's kind of irrelevant, really. But when it comes to deciding where they're going to go, they prioritise the rule saying northwest, which is actually this corner here. And then you go clockwise. All right, but we'll look at that in a moment. For now, we've got to pick an action slot. They prioritise an empty building, so an empty marketplace. Remember at the beginning, they're all empty, but as the game progresses, they'll start to fill up. And they'll also, like us, they're going to prioritise rows where they've got the most buildings already, but there isn't a marketplace action down here. So instead, they're going to go for where the high courtier's building is. And wow, look, we've got three marketplace actions in a row. One, two, three, where the high courtier is. So they're coming here, and then they'll choose the perpendicular row, so they could go here, here or here, the perpendicular row with the most of their buildings. So they're going to go and choose this one, build their building here. Now oftentimes with the corrupt magistrates actions, they're actually going to multiply or amplify their actions by the number of red and yellow buildings in the row, the buildings for the high courtier and for the corrupt magistrates. So this would be two. They don't ever activate our buildings. So having built a row here, if they take an action down here next time, it's going to be amplified by two. Right. Marketplace is an exception. It says there's a big fat one here that says they only do it once. The library action says times the number of buildings. So if they took a library action here, it would be twice. They'd take the library action twice. Okay. So let's have a look at this marketplace area. How does this work? Merv is in the centre here. And connected to Mer by these four little trade routes are four other cities. Like I said, they're going to start on this route here, which is kind of the northwest route as far as this map's concerned. They're going to place a disc here, which represents a trading post. They've extended the Silk Road out this way, which means now this outer place, Baghdad, becomes available. They could put another trading post here. Because they're the first player to place a trading post here, they take a camel. Right, someone's got a camel at last. And then normally you would pay cubes, in this case purple, to grab goods. They don't pay cubes, they're just going to grab one good. Now although there's four different types of goods here, these blue ones are called common goods. Okay. Although there's four different types, it doesn't actually matter. But let's just say they take the one that's depicted. But it doesn't matter, it, all it matters is it's a blue one, it's a common good. Okay. Now when they take their action on, they'll take a good for every trading post. So as they add more and more trading posts, they're going to get more and more goods every time they take this marketplace action. Because remember, if they place too many servants down here, they're going to be getting points for every good they have. These outer cities, these reward you with luxury goods. These are the brown ones. Okay. And why is that important? What's the difference? For the palace it makes no difference, but it does make a difference on these contracts when you're trying to fulfill these contracts. So this says I need a luxury good, a common good, and then one of either, okay, plus a resource cube of any colour. At this point they would fulfil, as soon as they're able and they've got enough goods or scrolls to fulfil a contract, they'll do so. So at the moment they've got one good and one scroll. These contracts need either two scrolls or two goods, so they can't quite fill a contract yet. So that's it, they've taken their action. Now, because they went first, High Courtier is next, and they're going to choose, and they'll choose, like I said, the row where you've got the most buildings, but they can't choose this row where we've got our only building, then the row with the fewest of their buildings, 
which means either this row, this row, or this row, in which case they'll go to the row closest to the queue. Place a building in the perpendicular row where we've got the most buildings, which is here. Okay. Right, now it's our turn, finally. And we've got an opportunity here to steal first place at the front here. And they've got a camel as it goes, so I don't think that's going to happen, but marketplace is going to be tough. There's only one more marketplace action available, and that's here. What I might prefer to do is set up a little bit for next turn and take the library action. There's one here, you see, and that would allow me to place a building here, and then I have two buildings in a row. So I might actually come down here and then take this library action. First, I gather resources. So this one, this row, generates just one resource for me. It's a tan cube. There we go. And with that tan cube, I can take the library action. With just one cube, I can get one scroll. So not hugely productive. It does mean I'm going to get a point. But I'm really setting up for the next turn. OK, let's do turn order. So. High Courtier has gone third. Corrupt Magistrate would go second. Now, this is where they can manipulate the turn order. Remember, they earned a camel. Now, camels can be spent, and they will be spent. The rules say Corrupt Magistrate will always spend a camel when they can. And what they can do is they can put a camel on the turn order space they would be in and push themselves forward. All right, so they've actually stolen first place from us. Because now we're going to go in to second place, fill the gap, but we get to grab the camel. Pretty neat, huh? The high courtier is going to do the same. So let's say, let's say they had two camels. They would come third, but if the high courtier had two camels, which can happen because they can steal them from these corner queues. If they had two camels, they would go place one here, push forward, place one here, push forward. Then the corrupt magistrate was next with a camel, so they would have gone third. But they can place a camel and take second, grab a camel, and then I would have come in third and grabbed two camels. So that's how camels are used. Okay, round three. High courtier is going first. My guess is they're going to try and grab this row because they've got two buildings here. And then, but that's fine, then we can grab this one where we've got two buildings. Let's see what happens. They're taking the walls action, so it's not palace. As it goes, there's no wall action here. So, where are they going to go? They're looking for an empty building of the intended type. So there's one, two, three, and the fourth one's filled. So it's going to be this row or this row. And they'll go to the one with the most high quality ace building. So they're going all the way down here. And then they're going to place a building in the perpendicular row that's got the most of their buildings. So they're going to go for this one. Now this time, wall action's up here, and they're going to amplify the wall action by the number of buildings, the number of high courtier and corrupt magistrate buildings in their active row. Okay, so they're going to do this twice. Right? Once for this building, once for this building. Okay. Now remember I told you building walls is the route to influence. And we've got some little logic here that helps us. Walls cost cubes, and they're going to pay, grab the walls that in priority cost purple, then tan, then teal, then orange. So they're going to go for two purple walls first. Two because they're taking two actions, right? So if we look up here, these are the tan walls, these are the orange, the teal, and then the purple walls. I say this because it's got the cost right next to them. <laughs> okay, so these two walls here cost one purple each. This one costs two purple. So we've got a tan, tan, two tan. All right, this gate costs three tan, and so on. All right, so they get more expensive as the game goes on. So they're going to choose purple first. So two low cost, single cost purple walls, which is bad for us because. Now suddenly, if we want to pay purple, it's going to cost us two. Right, where are they going to put them? And it says they're going to try and protect high courtier buildings first, then corrupt magistrate, and then player. Yes, you can protect other people's buildings, because 
you'll get one influence for protecting your own buildings, two influence for protecting other people's buildings. Okay, there's an incentive to protect other people's buildings. All right, and there's a little reminder here, two points to influence rather for protecting high courtiers, HC, one for protecting their own, two points for protecting player. Okay, but where? If they can place a wall that protects two of the high courtier buildings, say it was something like this, that, that protects two, right? not completely obviously because they can still be attacked from the north, but then they would do that. If they can protect one of the high courtiers and one of their own, they would do that next. So that would be their next choice. Protecting two of the corrupt magistrates' buildings would be their next choice, so something like that. Yeah. One of the high courtiers' buildings would be their next choice. So they can do this, so they can place here or here. This spot here and this spot here are of a lower priority because they protect one of the high courtiers and one of the players, right? One of the players, one of the high courtiers. And if we look at the list of priorities, so we're currently, one of the high court, courtiers buildings is priority D. If the wall protects one of high courtiers and one of ours, that's priority F. So that's a lower priority. So actually, the two walls are going to go here like this. And of course, in doing so, they've gained, because it's not a red building, it's high courtiers, they've gained two influence for protecting this one and two influence for protecting that one. They've gained four influence. These points don't really mean much. So the fact that they've passed this and passed this don't mean much because corrupt magistrate breaks the rules and never has to stick to the influence requirements. <laughs> it's a tough opponent. Okay, that's it. They've taken their turn. Now, that's their third card. We know the next one they do is going to be the palace. Now, the palace doesn't reward for walls, but it does reward for, and they've got one good and one scroll. So. I know next time they're going to be looking to go here or here. And I'm going here. And I'm going to go here and take the palace action. This one here. And what I really want to do next time is the marketplace action. I want to be first and I want to grab one of these two spots. And I should be good. No one's got camels right now. So I'm going here. This one generates an orange cube, every other blue, because I'm placing an act, taking an action on a space with a blue building, every other blue building generates resource. So I'm going to get a purple, an orange, and a tan. Yeah, super stuff. So I've got one scroll. I want to go in here now, and I'm going to have to pay tan to do so. I've got a tan. I'm going to place a cube. That gives me one favor which gives me one victory point. So I'm up to here. <laughs> it's a small lead, but it feels good. Now I can teach you about the camel markets. If you take an action in a middle row, okay, here or here, in the same place as this camel market, then we can also, and we can do this before or after our action. So I could have done it already, but I'm gonna do it after. We can either place a camel or remove all the camels that have been previously placed. Now, I happen to have one camel. All right? If you don't have any camels, you're a bit stuck. So I can do one of four things. Obviously, if it was on the flip side, it would be a different four things. But we can grab a caravan card. We can grab a scroll. We can grab one of those wild white cubes that acts as any colour, or you can grab a favour. I quite like to grab one of those white cubes, so I'm going to do that. And the reason why is because I want resources, because I'm hoping to go to the marketplace next. And the more resources I've got, the more I've got to spend. And a white cube is going to be helpful. Okay, that's my turn complete. It's time for the High Courtier. So High Courtier, he went first, so he's going to place it in the place where I've got most buildings, which is not there, where he's got fewest buildings, so not there. So it's going to be one of these two. In the case of the tile, be closest to the queue, so this one. And then in terms of which 
row is going to place this building. It will be where I've got most. So here, here or here. His preference is for where he's got fewest buildings. So here or here. And in the case of the tie, which is these two are equally viable, it just goes to the closest one. So it's going to go here. Hey, no one's got camels, so turn order is going to be straightforward. Three, two, one. And we get first dips, which is great because I want to go here. And I want to take the marketplace action. Now, which one do I take? If I take the purple one. I might actually go in this one here, the teal one. I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm going in the middle again, which means when I come around this side, that middle row becomes a camel market and one of my buildings. Remember, I don't have to take the marketplace action. We've got to keep reminding ourselves we could place a soldier, we could just gain a favour. And indeed, I don't have to take an action on an empty tile. I could, we can't activate this red one, but we could potentially take the mosque action if we wish. I really like to take the mosque action at some point. But let's go marketplace. So we're going to grab purple and teal. Mosque might be another key once I've done this because we know he's not going to push up the mosque and I will. And no matter what, he's going to play his palace three times once each year. So we know he's going to get his three servants out here. I can't block him completely. The good thing about the mosque track is it gives you upgrades. So you can upgrade one of these sites. So it's not producing a colored cube, but a white cube. You can gain favor. You can get it to producing an additional cube. And then you've got these scoring tokens. This one says three points for every building you have on a marketplace, for example, different types of four, four different types of, of buildings and so on up. There's lots of benefits to getting up the mosque track. Well, we'll come to that later. For now, I'm taking the marketplace action, grabbing purple and teal cube. I'm looking at my collection of resources. I think I'm actually going to go, I might have saved that white one actually. Maybe I would have been better off getting another scroll up here or even a spice, but white keeps always handy. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a trading post here at Bulk. I could go here. You can establish a trading post in the, at the same spot as another player. That's perfectly fine. But the benefit obviously of going here is that I take the camel and the camel's about to be useful to me because once you've placed your trading post, you can then start to buy goods. You can only buy one good from each city in the trade network. These are the resources I've got right now. So I could pay one cube here and grab some grapes. Each of the inner cities produces common goods, remember, right? The outer cities, rare goods. I can buy goods from cities where I don't have a trading post, but they're going to cost me a camel because I don't have a trading post. So let's say I wanted to buy another common good, say from Ray or even Smartland, doesn't matter where. I have to then spend a camel, you have to spend a camel to travel there and back, okay? I haven't established a trading post. Any camels, once you finish spending, will go onto the caravansary over here on these cards, All right? And then you can win those camels back when you buy those cards. We'll come to that later. So I could buy another common good. Or, if I wanted to, I could travel from my trade post with that one camel and buy some goods from Peshwa. Okay, if I didn't have a trading post here, it would have cost me two camels. One, two. But with a trading post, I just need to spend that one camel, pay one purple and one orange. I don't gain the... I haven't placed a trading post here, so I'm not gaining favour. But I'm gaining a rare good. Again, the icons on them don't matter because it's just either a rare good or a common good for the sake of the rest of the game. I don't have any more camels, so I can't go anywhere else. But these are spent. I gain two goods. The camel that I spent goes first, the furthest card from the deck that doesn't have a camel. And that's it, action taken. I'm happy with that. Now we could start fulfilling contracts. I've actually got enough to fulfill one of these contracts. I've got a scroll, I've got a rare good and I've got a common good and I've got a cube to pay the resource but this is a level two contract I don't yet have enough influence to start earning level two contracts so I'm just going to bank these for the time being and we'll let the AI now the corrupt magistrate do their fourth card which is going to be the palace that's the one we were expecting to see 
Okay, where are they going to do it? They're looking for an empty building. That palace is taken, that palace is taken. So there's one here and there's one here. Neither rose has red buildings in. Both have one high courtier. So that breaks the tie otherwise. And then to choose between these two will be the one with most of my buildings. So it's going here. It's not going to steal first place. Instead, it's going to try and block off my row. It thinks that's more important. And here's the palace action. It's managed to form a row of three buildings. I should have seen that coming. This is where you've got to try and beat the AI. Stop them building up these big rows. OK, and what this says is, this is a, he's got two buildings, yeah? One of his own, one of the high courtiers. So it's multiplied by two, if you like. So it says for one to three buildings, we've got two. It's going to take one palace action. OK. So he's going to place one of his servants in the palace. Where is he going to place it? Remember, he's got, at the moment, he's got one scroll and one good. OK, one scroll, one good. So here or here are good for him. He doesn't have any caravan cards, doesn't progress on the mosque. Now, this magistrate is a bit cheeky. They're going to place their servant in the hall that's going to score them the most points. Well, this would be one point and this would be one point, zero, zero. So he's going to place it in the hall of knowledge or the hall of trade. In the case of a tie, they're going to place their servant in the hall that would score me, the player, the most points. At the moment, I've got one scroll and two goods. So they're going to place it here. Because they don't want me, they think I'm going for goods, they don't want me going in there. Okay, fair enough. They don't score any favour because there's no icon on the second spot. Right, that's it, that's their turn. Now it's the high courtier, but this time I went first, so I get to place the high courtier. If I placed it, say, here, and put a yellow in here, that would only multiply this row up for the corrupt magistrate, so maybe I don't want to do that. But I also know if I place it here, High court is going to go first next time, which means who gets to place it? Well, it'll be the person who was last first, so that will be me again. So I get to place the high court here again. It might be nice to stop him going in the palace again, mightn't it? Or even somewhere like here, even if I put it here, it might be okay. Maybe I'll place it here and put a building here. It's tough, it's hard to know. But the high court here doesn't act in the camel market. Right, nobody's got camels, so again, turn order is simple. Three, two, one. We're back in the northwest corner. It's the end of the first year. So we're going to move to end of year scoring. Now, these servants that we placed here, they're not servants anymore. They're courtiers, right? They've been educated. So for each courtier in a hall, we if we want to score it, we've got to spend a favour. So I've got two and I'm going to spend two favour to activate both. It's nice and simple. One point for every scroll. I've got one scroll, so I'll get one point for this one. This one, one point for every good. I've got two goods. That's two points. That's three points in total. The corrupt magistrate, we know, has one good, so they're scoring one point, and they don't need to spend favour. So that's three points to me. I'm up to four, and one point for them. Nice and easy. Bonus points come from these scoring tiles. No one's collected them because no one's gone up the moss track. And you get a point for each building. So we've got four. They've got four. So we're up to eight, they're up to five. All right, so we're a little bit ahead, but it's early days. This is bothering me. I need to get up here so I can start fulfilling contracts and collecting more spices. We move to year two now. And at the end of year two, that's when the Mongols start attacking and that's when walls become significant. So yeah, maybe I'm thinking, well, I know he's going to build walls. Um, so we do want to grab some before they do. And also the caravansary, and there's an opportunity here for me to go and grab some stuff there, or indeed the mosque. Yeah, lots of options, and lots to think about. <laughs> there's a lot of depth to this game. But before we get going, we have to reset the AI deck. Now, this is interesting. There's two cards that they haven't played. They're not going to play them. Instead, we're going to shuffle up these four, so the palace may come out first this time. And that's okay, because remember, the palace needed to be a little bit delayed, just so they could set themselves up a little bit. It is possible that they'll go walls first, and then palace, which means they're a little bit stuck in terms of what's going to score points. But anyway, okay, so we've shuffled this up. So there's two cards that they're not going to play. There's 
the mo I'll shuffle these again because there is a chance that one of these might run out. So, for example, if they place all the walls and there's no more walls to be placed, you then throw the wall card out of here, um, and then one of these two will come into play. All right, so it is possible. But let's just talk about these two quickly. So if the AI were to play the mosque, they'll just take one of their discs and they'll just progress it. It says for the number of buildings being activated. So if they took a mosque action and activated three buildings, they would place their disc and they'd move one, two, three spaces up. And every time this card came up, they'd move up that number of spaces. So quickly they would move up the mosque track. And this one is a real killer. And each of these bonuses, the rule book will tell you how the AI responds to each one. It's nice and simple. For the caravan three, again, the same. They're going to um, take the caravan action. They don't spend queues, but again, it's multiplied by the number of buildings. So if they were taking the caravan and they had you know, three buildings in that row, they would take three cards. And what they're trying to do is collect sets. They're not limited in the same way as we are. So they're just going to take from the bottom cards that they have the least of right, in order to create as many sets of four of different spices as they can. So that's the AI ready for year two.